he throws the elevators, forced us off the property. But they always say, I'm not against you forming a union. But, you know, that's all they do is intimidate. Fighting for this union, I have a target on my back. Cherie, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you just fine. Can you hear me? I can. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, thanks Great. for joining us. Yeah, thanks for joining us. So, uh, Sharia is a last minute addition um, because uh, the the um, event that, that you're calling in to talk to us about is a bit of a, a last minute or not. Y'all probably been planning this, but is it hasn't been public for very long because y'all just went on strike yesterday. Uh, who are you? Yes. Where do you work? What's your union? Uh, and why are y'all on strike? Okay. Well, first and foremost, we don't have a union as of yet. We're trying to get a union, okay? And we are oh, working wow. with CWA 3509, and they have been a great help to us. But yesterday, yes, we did go on strike, um, and it was awesome. I mean, it was one of the biggest strikes ever. We had, like, over 600 people in, in the eight locations, over OK, which means that it was the biggest, the biggest strike ever, ever that we had. But, you know, the main purpose of our striking, because, as you know, we're a call center at Maximus and most who, who are women, women of color. And we're facing unacceptable work wages and working conditions. And we can't really afford to go to the doctor. Okay. And when I say for four to go to the doctor, I'm talking, okay, I'm a diabetic. Mm. And I had went to my primary and he told me my A1C was going up. And I, you know, and I was like, oh my gosh, what can I do? He said, Well, Sheree, what we're gonna do is put you on this drug, Ozempic. And I was like, okay, then. So he had, you know, uh sent Blue Cross Blue Shield of Virginia, um, uh, a procedure code saying that this is what I need. Well, because my husband's a veteran, I have also have Champ VA. Now, Blue Cross Blue Shield being my primary and Champ VA being my secondary. So what happens is I go to the pharmacy. And the pharmacy says that, no, um, it wasn't accepted by your insurance um, because you need prior approval. Okay. So we ran it through Champ VA and they went ahead and did it. Well, that was kind of baffling to me, but I, I know that my A1C it would go down because I was able to get my Ozempic. A couple of days, a couple of days later, I get a letter from Blue Cross Blue Shield saying, "Oh, um, you're you, you have been denied because you're not a diabetic too." What? Mm. I'm not a diabetic too. I my, my doctor told you my A one C was going up. That's my health. So with that said, it's if I didn't have Cham VA and if my husband wasn't a veteran, I, you know I would be out of luck right now so it's it's not as what maximus has portrayed it to be mm. our health care isn't up to par i mean to be honest with you we, i don't even feel that we should be paying health care mm. considering that we work for a vendor that supports the affordable care and they're getting paid from the government okay right. now when we did have our strike um we were, we were, we were just fed up. We we're, were fed up. Uh, you know, one of the call centers actually ended up closing down because they didn't have enough support in there. Okay. So, I mean, that's how serious we are. Okay. Now I do commend the Biden administration, vice president Biden and Camilla Harris, you know, for what they have done thus far, as far as, you know, the executive orders, they've said that they would, they gave us like a 1578. Now we're at 1658. But, you know, that's that's actually not enough. That's not even a, a living wage. OK, so mm -hmm. we're asked the administration to make a change, to do something. I mean, 
Cause we, cause we want at least twenty five dollars an hour, okay? Cause I do what Social Security does and what the IRS does. Now, if you have a loved one that's on Medicare, they, you know, don't understand a lot, and you know they don't know what what they're calling if they're calling um, Social Security or because it's our number. We're the main hub that everyone calls, and we just route the calls out. So I ended up explaining what you know, social security is, how they make their payments. And uh, it, it's just, it's, it's a lot. Now, over 10,000 workers uh, work for the federal government, answering calls for Medicare and the Affordable Care Act, which was formerly known as Obamacare. And many of my coworkers are in Texas, um, Virginia, Louisiana, Florida, Kentucky, uh, Virginia, and even Arizona. OK, and these and all these are people of color and of and it's just I, I'm just appalled by, you know, the greediness of uh, corporate America, of the CEO of Maximus, because he's made over 20 million dollars over the three years. And, you know, he hasn't given us a raise. Like I said before, and I reiterate in case you didn't understand, it came from the Biden administration. It was an executive order. OK, not that I'm complaining about what you've done, uh, President, but it's it's still not enough. It's still not a, a decent living wage for us. OK, we're still struggling. We still I still have co-workers that are going to food pantries. There is no reason why. No reason why whatsoever. Now, the Clinton administration outsourced um, the work and the Obama administration went ahead and expanded it. Mm -hmm. Now, they just renewed a contract. And I mean, I, I, that's something that I don't understand either, you know. It's like you have people there, your profits have went up 22% since you've gained. Because see, we used to be GDIT, those who don't know. And then Maximus bought us out. And I think it was like, I think they paid like $400 million. Um, I'm not really sure about the money to sell. But their profits have went up since they've gained us, okay? But we don't get any recognition. And that's what we're asking for, recognition. Uh, that is uh, not a lot to ask for. It seems eminently reasonable. And so y'all have not, ha, ha, y'all haven't had a union election yet. Then, I, for some reason, I was thinking that y'all were already unionized with CWA. Um, what are the no. prospects like for uh, for getting that election or, or for getting voluntary recognition? Well, you know, we're working on doing just that because you know it has to be fifty percent plus one, right? Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure our eyes are dotted and our T's are crossed before we do anything. Because as you know, if you take a vote and you're not, you, you don't have everything together, then you're going to have to start all over again. Yep. So your efforts have been lost. And you got to wait a year at least before you can. Yes, try you do. Yep. Yes, you do. Yeah. Well, uh, that that's absolutely uh, right to, to want to make sure that your uh, eyes are dotted and, and your T's are crossed. How is the company reacting to this union campaign? <clears throat> well, you know, we that's one thing we want. Maximus, you know, they say that they're not going to mess with the union. They're not going to intimidate us. Or, mm -hmm. But they do that anyway. And mm -hmm. they do it undercover, Wait, okay? On, now, now, Cherie, hold on. You're telling me that a company would lie? That just Oh, oh yes. <laughs> oh yeah. I have never heard of such before. <laughs> Example, okay. There were two layoffs, okay? One in January of 2023 and I another remember. in May of 2023. Now, if you're making so much money, how are you able to lay these folks off? Mm. and then hire more folks. How does that happen? CMS, how does that happen? Yep. So somebody is, is taking the numbers and doing something with them because I know that we're the ones who answer those phones calls. We're the ones who are making money for Coswell and Coswell is a CEO, CEO of Maximus. 
and we're not getting any benefits. We don't get a thank you. Everyone wants to get a raise. I don't care if I did start at the bottom. If you gave me a raise every 60 days, every 90 days, and, you know, and basically just said, Sheree, you know, you've been here for six years now, and I think that, you know, you should be doing more. Do you know I work on three lines of business? And when I say three lines of business, I mean Medicare, Marketplace, Tier one and claims. So, okay, you call in and you say, well, I'm calling in because I, I received this doctor's bill and I would like for you to explain it to me. I'm not a CPA. I haven't went to school. Right. I have to explain that bill. But each time you ask me to go up to a new level, you're not giving me a raise, CEO. No, you're not. You don't get a raise until you go from tier two to ISG. Hey, five seconds. Just wanted to say that this is only possible because of our donors. If you want to see more of this, then consider donating yourself at tvlr.fm slash donate. Right. And something, so, something I just wanted to say is that I think it's really important that when you have government contractors, when you have public dollars that are being mm -hmm. spent, you know, there has to be strings attached to public dollars in my assessment. I think that right. would be something that could really make a difference here because when a company is making money off of our tax dollars, they should not be allowed to behave in the way that some of these companies behave. And they should be forced to mm -hmm. sit at the table with their workers and, and come to a fair agreement, right? That is just the reasonable thing to do. Um, and, um, uh, Sheree, are you in Hattiesburg? Is that right? Yes, I am in Hattiesburg. And I just want to piggyback off what you said. You, uh, you were saying that your CEO or president should, you know, meet with us. Well, we went up to Virginia several times and you know, he won't even meet with us. Actually, you know, he closed the elevators, forced us off the property and everything, but wow. they always say, Okay, I'm not, you know, against Max. I mean, I'm not against you forming a union. Mm. But, you know, that's all they do is intimidate. Right. You know, I know fighting for this union, I have a, a, a target on my back. I know this, okay? But I'm fighting for what I believe in. Right. And I believe that I should be paid for what I'm worth. I'm not asking you to give me anything. Trust and believe that way because we are the backbone. The Latinas, the black women, we are the backbone and you, and we are strong. We are strong and we proved that yesterday, how strong we are. Absolutely. How long have you been working for Maximus? I, you may have said it earlier, but I, I can't recall. I've been working for them for six years now. For six, six years? years. Right. And with the six, within the six years, I started at 965. Jesus. Then, you know, I to 1035 because I went to dual. Okay. And then I went to, um, I think it was 12 or 1135. But like I said before, we didn't get a, a living, a livable rage, shall I say, until Biden and his administration said, okay, this is an executive order. Right. Maximus has not did anything. They do not do more than what they have to do. That's all they do. And like I said, our CEO, his, his, no one in his family may have diabetes. They may not have glaucoma. They may not have asthma. But you know what? You have to have compassion for the people that you work, um, that are working for you. And that's and that's not being displayed, not at all. Yeah, that yeah, and that's uh, that's just insane to be working a job for nine sixty five uh, only six years ago, um, and this is you know this is such an important job, <laughs> you know, making sure that people know where to go to get their health care. <clears throat> the idea that 
uh, you know, that they would be paying you nine sixty five and then only paying you fifteen sixteen after this uh, after this this executive order came out. You know, uh, a- absolutely, and no doubt, you know, a three dollar an hour raise is a big deal, but fifteen dollars an hour is just is it's not enough. For you know, for a job that that is is as important as this, and it shouldn't have been outsourced in the first place. You mentioned that about Bill Clinton and Obama, and all of these people outsourcing all of these government jobs. That's a huge, huge deal uh, that people really need to be uh, more concerned about. And really, frankly, the you know the federal employee unions need to be more <clears throat> more antagonistic towards. You know, I, I just don't see very many anti-privatization campaigns. You should be in my union, right? <laughs> I'm a federal employee. I have a union. Uh, I'm an AFGE. I'm a union steward. You should be in my union, and you should be making union wages, and you should have union health care, and you should have a pension just like I do. Right, right. And, you know, to be honest, that's why we're asking for 35, not 35, but 25. And that's not a lot, because like I said, you know, government, we're the government. And I answer Social Security questions and I answer IRS questions and I'm an accountant. I'm a therapist. And, you know, I'm all that. People just call some time to vent. And if you work with the elderly before, that's all they want to do, because they don't sometimes they don't have nobody to talk to. Right. So I have to listen to it. I have to be an active listener. Mm-hmm. I'm getting trained. I was, we were considered essential during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, if we're an essential, why don't you uh, pay us like we're an essential, you know? Exactly. That's exactly right. How are your, <clears throat> how are your coworkers reacting to the campaign? How, how many people do you feel like, um, you know, uh, are on board. And, and uh, you know, you mentioned that actually uh, so many people struck in, in, in at least one or two locations that they that they had to shut uh, shut the call center down. Yes, we have a location in New Orleans. Um, it's called in, in Bugaloosa, actually, you know, and they had mm, it was like three hundred and forty workers who were on strike. OK, mm-hmm. wow. and actually they shut that center down. They shut it down that day. Because, and you know, what's really appalling is if I have, if I'm on a phone with a beneficiary or a consumer Mm. and they don't know what they're doing and I can't answer the question and I've been on the phone for a while explaining deductibles, out-of-pocket costs, what, you know, how you get your premium tax credit from the government, the way you should use it. And that supervisor sees me on the phone. They will send me a message and say, oh, I see you've been on the phone for an hour and a half. Okay. well, if you had training, you could pick up that phone and say, oh, this is Cherie's supervisor. And I heard that I hear that you're having. But they can't even do that because it's a lot of favoritism. And they just get these positions because they know somebody that knows somebody, mm. but they don't know what they're doing on the phones. That's why Bogaliza was closed because the supervisors and managers can answer the phones. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Uh, well, uh, is there anything else that you think that folks should know about, um, you know, about what y'all are, uh, about what y'all are going through and, and maybe how folks can support? Well, you know what? You guys can support us by calling, you know, CMS, the the administration, and just letting them know that, hey, because like I said before, if your grandparent, auntie, uncle called me, Mm. I would have to give them that informative information. And that's what I do. I'm very essential to that job. Very. I've been there for six years. And if I was doing something wrong, trust and believe, I wouldn't have been there. Right. Because like I said, the people that they let off two separate times in 2023, they didn't get notice. Mm-hmm. Not, we just want to be treated fairly. And yesterday, when we did our strike, we let them know we're not taking it anymore. 
Uh, Cherie, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. Appreciate it. And uh, keep us in the loop whenever y'all do stuff. Um, I, I think that uh, the fellow that, that reached out to us, um, I'll actually go ahead and, and make sure that he has my uh, my email now so that we can get in on your press releases and all that kind of stuff. Um, and so I, I just uh, sent him my email through Twitter DM. Uh, let him know that I did that, and uh, and yeah, let, let, keep keep us in the loop, and uh, feel free to holler at us anytime. All right, and Jake, Jacob, I want I appreciate you having me on today, so I can express and tell the general public what is really going on, what their tax dollars are really doing. I mean, we're just we're essential. We're essential to you because if anybody walked out of that center. Because to tell you the truth, no one should have been in that center yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely right. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Have a nice day. Yeah, you too. You just saw a clip from the Valley Labor Report. We are live every Saturday morning from 9.30 a.m. till 12.30 p.m. And we pride ourselves on keeping all of our content free to everybody so that we can talk to as many working folks as possible. If you support the work that we're doing, you think that it's important, you think that it's good, then consider making a monthly contribution to the project, and you can do that on our website, tvlr.fm.